Hello, and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to continue talking about red cell morphology. And we're going to talk about hereditary elliptocytosis. It's one of my favorites. I think as a student, I uh, started calling this Mike and Ike's syndrome. Um, I, I don't know that that's really helpful to anyone but me, but. <laughs> it is if people eat Mike and Ike's. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, hey, maybe you're a hot tamales person. You know, hey, and, 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 any yeah. of those like that. Yep, yep. Um, pretty cool though. This is a good slide to represent this disorder. HE slides are nice and easy. <laughs> that's why we like them. Most students like them. Like, oh, here's an HE. <laughs> So what do we see in hereditary elliptocytosis, Melissa? Elliptocytes? Yeah, <laughs> elliptocytes, yeah. We see some ovelocytes, right? The less extreme uh, sisters, perhaps, to uh, the ellipto. Yeah. I think before we talk about that, though, we should just briefly mention the patho of HE. Sure, that would be useful, right? Um, so this would be uh, problems with the cytoskeletal um, uh, structure of the cells, uh, inherited disorders that affect our horizontal linkages. Um, so I think of alpha beta spectrin, right, or heterodimer, um, and then deficiencies in those linkages uh, as the cells need to pass through small spaces, uh, capillaries, they may be collapsed into these oval shapes, and then they, due to the uh, insufficiency, they don't pop back, right? So. Yeah, and so they're just less flexible, less malleable, like regular red cells would be, or I guess normal red cells would be. Mm -hmm. And so you're generally going to find that these patients with HE will have a slight hemolytic anemia, nowhere near as severe as some of the other hemolytics. HE right. is generally very mild, but mm -hmm. There's still some some slight hemolysis because these elliptos and ovalos are not quite as flexible and they're a little bit more fragile. Not as mm. fragile as spherocytes, but they're still a little bit more fragile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and probably hemolysis almost isolated to like stressors and things like that, like maybe um, different things that might come up to cause them to have issue. Um, there is a relative to this. I say relative. Uh, it's a more yeah. severe version. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Really cool one yeah. to say. It is. <laughs> and we don't have, that's not what we're talking about here, I guess, but. No, we don't have an HPP slide. No, hereditary pyropoikilocytosis. Yeah. Um, severe morphology, but that's yeah. not what we're dealing with here. No, but it is a, the cooler, cooler for us to look at version. Not necessarily cooler for the patient, but cooler for us to look at. Yeah, probably horrible for the patient. Well, isn't that how true things are when things are more beautiful for us? They're never, they're always worse for the patient, so. <laughs> yep, boring for us, good for them, yep. <laughs> uh, cool, so um, I, maybe we'll talk about these different morphologies. Like, where do we draw the line between an ovalo mm -hmm. and an elliptocyte? Yeah, so let, let me bring up my little annotating guy here and just show that when we're talking about elliptocytes, they have to have those parallel edges. So like Dave said earlier, they're Mike and Ike's or sometimes, what are they, hot tamales you said? Uh, yeah, maybe hot tamale. <laughs> sometimes we're referred to as cigar cells because they're super parallel and they're generally very thin like a cigar would be. So you're just looking for that general shape. Like this guy here is great, right? Super, super parallel edges with the rounded caps perfect elliptocyte because the edges are parallel and then you get into things like ovalocytes and ovalocytes have more of these oops, rounded edges like this i can't draw i apologize more of these rounded edges and less you know um, elliptocytic less parallel it's a little bit more bowed than your parallel edges for your ovalos yeah to keep the, the candy thing going what is this these are cadbury eggs compared to, uh, <laughs> yeah. they just have that kind of rounded, yeah. Now I want candy. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the, uh, other than that, that's, those are the hallmarks, I would say, right, of yeah. uh, HE? Yeah, pretty much HE is 
ovalocytes and ellipticites. <laughs> and you may see like schistocytes, like you may see other other kind of elements. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a little fragment here. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Again, these cells are not as flexible. They are more prone to rupturing than a normal red cell. Again, not as much as a spherocyte, but still, it's still more prone than a normal erythrocyte. So occasionally you get the schistocytes. And like Dave said, probably more during times of infection or where there's a stress on the body. I guess we'll look around a little bit and see if we can find anything. And before sure. we move on, this is a neutrophil just for completeness. Yeah. And I wouldn't say a banned neutrophil. <laughs> I would say a neutrophil just because when I call, or I guess when we call bands, we're pretty conservative on calling bands and they really need to do need to be perfect all the way around equal size, no creeps, no elbows. And if you look, this one's got little fists here and then thin little arms around it. So it's, it's not equal. So it's more of a neutrophil than a band. Agreed. But you need to go by whatever your institution is. That's true. Yes, but absolutely. Follow our proceed. standards, it's a neutrophil. If I could banish bands, I would, yeah. but. <laughs> Ooh. All right. So we do have a nice schistocyte here. Yep. Right? And it looks like we have another one over here. Uh -huh. yep. Other than that, looks like ovalos and elliptos. Yep. Pretty uneventful. Got another field. Yeah, similar. Yeah, similar. So we've got another schisto right here, another schisto over here, maybe another one over here. Yeah. I yep. got a baby ellipticide. I know. <laughs> it's little. <laughs> We got some uh, morphology in the bottom right here. That's like really, really dark, uh, condensed kind of. Uh, Guys here. Yeah, I was trying to decide whether or not they're um, two two cells in close proximity or. Um, just All I can think far. about is a snowman. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, in reality, we don't really don't need to concern ourselves with one strange yeah. looking cell in one field uh, yeah i can't tell if it's just like twisted on itself or if it is two spherocytic little cells together yep. more than likely it's just an ellipto or an eval that's twisted on itself but we can't really tell but like dave said there's only one so we're gonna ignore it yep. well we'll keep it in case we see others but we're gonna just we're not gonna call anything based off of it right all right let's keep going Neutrophil. And I'm trying to, while I'm looking at the morph specifically, we should always be like uh, mindful of other stuff going on on the slide too. Like when that pl platelets, things like that. That should always be kind of background going on. <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. Move on again. See, if, let's go in a little bit deeper into what we find here. The same thing. Yep, yep. All right, let's do one more. So really, it's just elliptos, ovalos, and sh would you call schistocytes on this one? Um, it you know it depends. So this is if I'm a, this is a confession, hematology confession. I tend to be particularly sensitive to schistocytes. Um, so if my institution gives me the ability to report something like rare, um, that I, I would probably be leaning towards that, right? Um, but yeah, yeah it's, we're, we're kind of in the, in the middle, middle zone. And I don't think mathematically we've hit the threshold that we would call schistocytes. Yeah. Um, but I do try to be sensitive to them. Um, and a slide like this, where the story I'm trying to convey to the clinician is that, hey, ovalos, elliptos, um, and then for them to kind of consider in their, their differential diagnosis, this kind of capacity of a hemolytic. 
um, anemia kind of thing. So I probably wouldn't report it, but I would love to say rare or something like that if I was able. Yeah, it depends on how the institution calls them. You're right. So I think for us, like you said, we wouldn't call them. Is not enough. Mm -hmm. um, definitely maybe two plus selectos, two plus ovalos for this patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that's about it. All that we would call and, you know, that's, that's okay. That's, that's good yeah. for this patient that there's not a lot of just like, so. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I think that's all for this one. So thanks for watching. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like notifications whenever we post a new video. And feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email with comments or suggestions about future content. Thanks.